there are two aspects to the mind. First, it is what you like and want to buy. And secondly, it is about what you can afford. For example, Sally can only have a demand for coffee if she intends to buy the coffee and has the means to do so. When Sally both wants to and can afford to buy coffee, we say that Sally has an effective demand for coffee. Given the price of coffee, Sally will demand a certain quantity of coffee. Note, there's a difference between wants and demand. We have an unlimited amount of wants. We cannot necessarily afford it, or we do not necessarily need it, but we want it. Wants can become demand if we can afford it. There's also a difference between wants and needs. Needs are the basic things we need on a daily basis for our survival, but we cannot necessarily afford it. Needs can become demand if we can afford it. So what type of things will influence the quantity of coffee that Sally will buy? We say quantity demanded is a function of certain things. This is how we write mathematically what factors has an influence on Sally's demand for coffee. QD stands for the quantity of coffee demanded. One of the things that will surely influence the quantity of coffee that Sally will buy is the price of coffee. So this means the quantity of coffee demanded is influenced by the price of coffee. What other factors will influence the quantity of coffee Sally will buy? What about the price of related goods? For example, if Sally likes both coffee and tea and the price of tea drops, then Sally will rather buy tea and she will buy less coffee. So tea and coffee are related goods because they are substitutes in consumption. So the price of tea will definitely influence the quantity of coffee that Sally buys. Another related product can be sugar. If you drink sugar in your coffee, it means that coffee and sugar are complements in consumption because you use it together. So if the price of sugar increase, you will buy less coffee as well because the price of coffee with sugar has increased. Another factor that will influence the quantity demanded is the amount of income Sally has. If Sally is very rich, she might buy all the coffee she wants. But if she only gets a small income, she might only buy one cup a day. Then obviously, the quantity of coffee Sally demands will also depend on how much she likes coffee. Therefore, her tastes and preferences. If she is a true coffee enthusiast, she will have a high demand for coffee. But if she only likes coffee a little bit, she will demand a lower quantity of coffee. The last factor is the amount of people in Sally's household. That might sound like a strange influence on demand, but it basically just refers to the amount of people she's responsible for buying coffee. If Sally is single and have no children or other dependents, then she will only buy coffee for herself. But what if she lives with a partner and two children and a mother? She might then have to buy coffee for them as well. And that will influence Sally's demand for coffee. Therefore, the quantity a person demands of a product is a function of, meaning is influenced or determined by the price of the product, the price of related products, the person's income, the person's tastes and preferences, and the number of people in the household. Meaning the quantity of a product demanded is dependent on these factors, or also called independent variables. So what will determine the quantities of coffee Sally plans to buy? First, the price of coffee, the lower the price of coffee, the larger the quantities of coffee that Sally would want to buy. Then, the price of related goods, complements, goods that are used jointly, sugar and milk are complements, as they are used in the process of preparing a cup of coffee, or substitutes, goods that can be used instead, 
Tea is a substitute as Sally can drink tea if she cannot afford coffee. Also, one's income. Sally's decision will be influenced by her income. The higher her income, the more coffee she will be able to afford. And the size of the household. If Sally lives alone, she will buy less coffee than if she was living with someone who also enjoys consuming coffee. As well as Sally's tastes and preferences. The more Sally enjoys coffee, the more she will consume and hence buy. However, Sally may not like coffee and only purchase it for her visitors. She will then consume less coffee. In the real world, everything changes minute by minute. One minute, your favorite beverage is Coca-Cola, and the next, it is Stoney, meaning your preferences change. Or you might have a job with a big income, but get fired. Then your income changes. So in reality, everything changes all the time. But because it's very difficult to take all the change into consideration, we assume that all other variables are constant. The only thing that can change is the price. For introductory purposes, we make the citrus paribus assumption, meaning that all other variables are assumed to be constant, except the price of the product. Hence, the quantity demanded becomes a function of price. Therefore, the law of demand states, all other things being equal, or citrus paribus, the higher the price of a good, the lower the quantity demanded will be. The law of demand states that there is a negative or inverse relationship between the price of a product and the quantity demanded. A negative relationship can be identified by one variable increasing while the other variable decreases. For example, if the price of a product increases, then the quantity demanded will decrease. This is the same is true if the price of a product decreases, the quantity demanded will increase. This table shows the quantity of coffee that Sally demanded. This is called a demand schedule. We can see that Sally's demand for coffee is a clear reflection of the law of demand. As the price of coffee increases, the quantity of coffee demanded decreases. We can also present Sally's demand graphically by putting the price of coffee on the vertical axis and the quantity demanded on the horizontal axis, and then plotting the information in the demand schedule on the graph. If the price of coffee is 10 Rand, then the quantity of coffee demanded will be 100. If the price of coffee is 20 Rand, then the quantity of coffee demanded will be 80. If the price of coffee is 30 Rand, the quantity demanded will be 60. 30 and 60 crosses here. If the price of coffee is 40 Rand, then the quantity demanded will also be 40. If the price of coffee is 50 Rand, the quantity demanded will be 20. And lastly, if the price of coffee is 60 Rand, no one will demand any coffee. It will be too expensive. So quantity demanded will be zero. If we connect all these points, we will see a graphical representation of the demand curve. D for demand. Sally's demand curve is downward sloping, depicting the negative relationship between the quantity demanded and the price of the product. Please take note that the axes on the graph are marked. Price of coffee and the quantity of coffee. Also note that the graph has a name, Sally's demand for coffee. When drawing a graph, ensure that your graph's axes are clearly marked and your graph has been named. Firms are interested in their market as a whole, as opposed to the individual consumer's demand. They need a market demand curve. The market demand is the sum of all the individual demands. The market demand has the same characteristics as the individual demand curve, with the exception that the number of prospective buyers become a factor as opposed to the number of people in an individual household. To determine the market demand for coffee, we will assume that there are five consumers of coffee. Sally, Norma, Tando, Jessica and Rafiwe. They all have their own demand preferences as illustrated in the next schedule.
The mark demand can be determined by adding up all the individual quantities demanded by each individual at the particular price. Here is the market demand schedule. Let's calculate the market demand at every price. From this information, we can draw the market demand for coffee. At 10 Rand, the market demand will be 480. At 20 Rand, the market demand will be 80 plus 40 plus 145 plus 55 plus 110 will be 430. At a price of 30 Rand, the market demand will be 60 plus 30 plus 135 plus 40 plus 100 will be equal to 365. At a market price of 40, the quantity demanded will be 40 plus 20 plus 120 plus 45 plus 90, gives a total of 315. At a market price of 50, the quantity demanded will be 20 plus 10 plus 100 plus 30 plus 80, gives a total of 240. And lastly, at a market demand of 60, the total quantity demanded will be 0 plus 0 plus 90 plus 25 plus 70 would be equal to 100, uh, 185. At a price of 10 Rand, the quantity demanded is 480. At the market price of 20 Rand, the market demand is 430. At the price of 30 Rand, the market demand is 365. At the price of 40, the market demand is 315. At the market demand, at the market price of 50 Rand, the market demand will be 240. And lastly, at a market price of 60, the total market demand will be 185. Now we can connect these dots to get the market demand curve. The market demand is a negatively sloped, just as the individual demand curves. It is very important to distinguish between a movement along a demand curve and the shift of the demand curve. An easy way to remember the difference is if there is a change in one of the variables on the axis, there will be a movement along the demand curve. Changes in all other variables will cause a shift of the demand curve. A movement along the demand curve is therefore only caused by the price of the product. A movement along the curve simply means that there is a movement from one point of the curve to another, like a movement from point A to point B. This can only be due to an increase in price, and this is called a change in the quantity demanded. The demand curve did not shift, so it is not a change in demand but only a change in the quantity demanded. A shift in the curve is caused by any other variables that is not on the axis of the curve. Hence, any variable that is influenced by demand besides the price of the product, like the price, prices of related goods, households, income during a sp specific period, the tastes or preferences of the consumer, number of people in a household and other influences as well. A change in any of these factors will cause a shift in the demand curve. A shift in the market demand can be similarly be influenced by the above factors, as well as many more. We will now examine how the different factors can cause a shift in the demand curve. A shift in the demand curve will look like this. If demand increases, it will shift to the right, and if it decreases, it will shift to the left. This is called a change in demand because the entire demand curve shifts. A substitute is a good that can be used in the place of another good to satisfy a consumer's want, like tea and coffee. Hence, a decrease in the price of tea. So if the price of tea drops, the quantity of tea demanded will increase. Note the demand curve stays perfectly still, so we just slide down the demand curve. When the quantity of tea demanded increases, the quantity of coffee demanded will decrease. This will cause a shift of the demand curve for coffee to the left. 
note that the price of coffee remains the same. Only the quantity of coffee demanded has decreased. A complement is good that is used jointly with another good to satisfy a want. Sugar is a complement of coffee as these two products are used together. If the price of coffee decreases to price PB, there will be a movement along the demand curve for coffee. And the quantity of coffee demanded will increase to QB. Now people buy more coffee, but because they use sugar and coffee together, they will also demand more sugar. This will cause an increase in demand for sugar, which can be seen by a rightward shift of the sh demand for sugar. As the price stays the same, the quantity of sugar demanded will have increased. A fall in income of consumers will result in a decrease in demand for a product. As consumers will buy less of the product, an increase in the income will result in an increase in the demand for a product, provided the product demand is a normal good, and in inferior goods demand will decrease if income increases. This will cause a shift in the demand curve, meaning a change in demand. A change in consumer preference due to factors such as advertising or fashion will cause an increase or a decrease in the demand curve. If a consumer starts to dislike a product, like they realize the product, smoking or sugary foods are unhealthy, they will try to use less of it. This will cause a shift in the demand curve. If a consumer starts to like a product more, they maybe saw an advertisement and likes the product, then they will start buying more of this. And this will cause a rightward shift of the demand curve. Change in population can also shift the demand curve. The larger the population, the greater the demand will be for a product. Similarly, a small population will demand less of a product. Changes in the expected future prices of a product will influence the demand for the product today. If a consumer expects an increase in the price of a product, they will demand more of that product now in order to avoid paying a higher price in the future. An expected decrease in the price of a product will cause demand to decrease now and increase later when the price of the product decreases. The distribution of income also has an influence on the demand curve. A redistribution of income from high income households to low income households will cause a decrease in the demand for the products that the high income households demand and an increase in the demand for products that low income households demand.